when I compare both of these guys, it's a very difficult comparison. It's hard for me to really choose a winner. But from a lyrical standpoint, I feel like most depth gets the edge to me because some of his, the depth of what he's saying is a little more intricate than what Karma presents. You made this comment when Kwali is, if he glosses over things, he says black stuff. He says surface level stuff that sounds great, but he doesn't necessarily go delve deeper into it. So part of me lean towards most stuff, but I have a lot more to say on Common as you hear me out, but I'll let you go now. What do you think, Common or most stuff? I'm not going to answer that question. Of, um, but hear me out. Okay. I'm going to start here. Um, I would like you all to I would like to share with you all my detective story. So in about 1998, um, I was beginning to really explore the underground of the internet hip hop. And um, there were a lot of sites um, that were talking about, we, were, we put their lists of MCs. And around the same time, The Source did a top 50, Blaze did a top 50, remember Blaze Magazine, Blaze, you know, oh, and it would be, Blaze. and it would be all, you know, the usual suspects. You get to your top 10, you know, you have Rakim, Harris, One, Nas, the Fuji Rap. But this one particular underground site, their list was strictly based off of skills, and lyrical advancement of the craft and the culture. And this list was full of like underground luminaries and a lot of names at the time who I didn't even know. Um, I, I could say some of these names and people be like, what the fuck are you talking about, Slick Vic? Who's ADM? Who's Sage Francis? Who Ooh, is Slug? That's you know, some old who, names from the past. Sage who, Francis, shout out the, shout out the yo, uh, oh my goodness. Who is Gift of Gab? What's the oh. Black Militia? You know, these were the well, kind of names on this Gab, list. You know, shout out to Gift of Gab, y'all. Shout out to Gift of Gab. These were not your stereotypical list. But number one, and, and number one on this list was Common Sense. Um, and this was around this, you know, he was still, he was starting to be known as Common um, at this time because of the whole legal situation with the reggae band. I could believe it. So this is around 96, 97. Yeah. And so, yes. but they still had him listed as Common Sense. And they talked about, and this breakdown talked about the Resurrection album. And they talked about how he used multi-syllabic wordplay more advanced than anyone did at that time when that album came out. About, about his ability to really rhyme and represent the culture. Um, and they had common sense, number one, over all of these other... He was like a jazz MC. He was like, he was like a jazz level musician common when it came sense. to MCmanship. I'll yeah, give you that. Yeah. That's true. And so um, that is where I want to start. And the question I have to ask myself is, is that common lyrically that much different from the common of the last few albums? The common of the album where uh, No ID produced the whole record. I thought it was fucking incredible. Mm -hmm. um, the common album that had the single with, uh, with um, uh, man, what's, what's, what's his name? Um, Vance Staples on it. Mm -hmm. um, I listened to that whole album. Um, the beats weren't my favorite. I didn't think the production was as good as the album with No ID. But if I'm really being fair with myself, with my ears, and I listen to the lyrics, um, it's very similar to when you listen to, say, Illmatic, and then you listen to, like, a Nas album from, like, the early 2000s that is remixed by Ninth Wonder or an MF Doom. And it has the same musicality as the earlier work. You realize the lyricism really has not changed. Um, so when I listen to that that album with with Commons, or even with like further back, Finding Forever, or even the latest Common recordings, what I realize is that lyrically, technically, his approach to writing is the same. I think it's more of the other extracurriculars around um, Lonnie Smith. Um, you know, being the spokesman for like these science and Verizon commercials. Are you talking about Rashid? Are you guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, like that guy that like we we represent. We see Common as like this other kind of brand that is like often very much a caricature of like a conscious fist in the air black artist. Um, you know, the, the oh, wait a minute. The, you don't you don't believe that, track, You don't believe you know, that his writing. 
is 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 uh you believe that his writing is still as potent now as it was on One Day It'll All Make Sense or Like Water for Chocolate because as My great as theory. I think Carmen was, I don't think he is that good anymore. Not on that level. I still like him. I still enjoy Hear me music. out. Okay. I challenge you to go and listen to some of those verses from then and some of those verses now or closer to now and the approach, the tactics, the techniques are very much the same. The music is different. The image is different, mm. you know, and that I think plays into a lot of how people, people's opinion on it. On him. But if you, if you listen to his verse from the Selma soundtrack song with John Legend, like, it's very, very, very strong bars. Very strong bars. Strong, solid bars. Well, strong, solid bars. Very lyrically sound. You know, it's the, the Are those the bars content, like the bars or the, the sixth sense? I would say the content is the same. The approach is the same. The sixth sense bars just have a DJ premiere. And so it speaks to, to our heavens, boom no back soul. No weapon. Formed against your glorious destiny. I mean, it was a good song. I think Carmen has definitely changed over the years. I don't know if he's as potent as he was on like Water for Chocolate. I'm just not sure. Perhaps your point about maybe those were Dilla beats. So maybe I'm viewing yeah. it differently, but lyrically it just doesn't seem like I, and it may be something changes in a man over time. He may not be the same person that he was then to have that same type of grit. Something feels like it's missing, but the guy's got to be 50 years old at this. He's got to be a good 48, 49, so he's not the same guy he was, but I'll give you this. We are talking about Carmen in his prime, so you, you're you able to place Carmen in his prime versus most deaf in his prime, and if you're saying prime Carmen was on that level, I would accept that. I don't know if I would say that the Carmen of now is as good as the Carmen from the early 2000 period. I'm not sure if I feel I would, that. I would say that... Um... If what we're doing is analyzing overall arc versus overall artistic arc, and then take the cumulative of impact, skill, lyricism, mm -hmm. cultural, cultural um, contribution, um, it makes it a much harder thing to uh, to analyze and come to a final answer on than say prime versus prime or now versus now. If I said um, if I said overall, I feel like Carmen's probably done more than most stuff in the in the hip hop realm. He's yeah, had just more in albums. Just from a discography, from a discography, from a discography standpoint, he's been superior to most stuff in that way. But if I was to take take some of those other things out and match them just with pure lyrical skill, ability, depth, and content, and songwriting, then it's very it's close. close. And I'm and I may. As I stated, as I at the outset of this argument, I leaned towards most depth because I felt like the depth that he delved into lyrically was a little more intricate than the way Common puts it. But in terms of just writing, if we're talking about overall and what they've done, then I bring in stuff like live performance, and I've seen them both several times. I would have to give Common the edge in that arena too. A very entertaining live show, most being a more artsy person bases it off a of feeling and not necessarily. Uh, technique and the formula of giving a live show. He did a lot of singing, a lot more singing than I wanted to hear, a lot of talking to the audience about stuff when I wanted to hear the records. Uh, I, I felt like Carmen was a much better, plus Maimuna Youssef, shout out to Maimuna, was also backing him up as a background singer and as a um, as as an MC as well, because she got up and she always has about 80 bars for the people with her dominating, mm -hmm. overpowering mm -hmm. hip-hop voice. So Carmen's live show was a superior show to what I've saw most do in the past, even though I enjoy most of the show as well. So it's other elements that I would give common overall, but prime on prime, bar for bar. Three uh, words. Okay. Three words. Kareem Ali. Three words. Gotta say the whole name. It's like a tribe called Quest. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I've seen them both live as well. Okay. Now, Common has a reputation for having a robust live show. Um, but I've seen the Mighty Most live, and he takes no backseat. Um, I don't know what concert you were at. Maybe, maybe he had a cold that day. But the Mighty Most I've seen live, him three times, and I've even felt Talib was better than Most Live. I, I guess it's about what aesthetic are you looking at live? Because mm -hmm. Most Lives, to me, was like a hip-hop Marvin Gaye. You know, and, and the, the singing was, was a plus. For me, the singing was a plus. Because I saw the way 
he made people swoon with the vocals. It was a minus like, for me. It was a minus for I didn't want to hear singing, that shit. Singing in an Umi Saz kind of way is so hip hop to me that it, when he starts singing, it doesn't stop being hip hop. Well, Umi, Umi Saz was a song that, yes, I wanted to hear that, but he was just randomly singing anything. <laughs> I don't want to hear that shit. And he wouldn't necessarily do the songs that I thought that everybody wanted to hear. We wanted to hear some of his classic stuff, but he just was doing random stuff um, both times. Now, when I saw him, with Talib, with Farrell March and Gene Gray, it was well, a better show. I guess it depends than... too on on what record was out at that Very true. time too. Mm-hmm. Very true. I guess Very it might true. too depend on because because uh, if you saw him like when the new game was out, you might have just got a poo poo platter of like of like of like singing the lore from 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 Dante Smith. Where if you saw you might might have got like the mighty most in rare form. Or so if you saw him black on black on both sides, was out. You might have just saw most. Of them. Yeah, black on both sides. I didn't see. I, I saw episodes of. I, I I looked back on YouTube and saw uh, footage of him live then, and that was a lot better than the times where I saw most. Uh, and depending on what record was up, the New Danger was solid. I like the album. But yeah, I saw him around that time, and I saw him a little bit after that, like in the mid two thousands. It just wasn't as entertaining as I had hoped it would be. I mean, it was great, but in comparison to Common, Common was nonstop the entire time. KRS One, Busta Rhymes level show. It was, it was, it was teetering, teetering yeah. on that when I saw him. The energy was high. Yeah, man, he 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 performs live like a like a light skinned Billy Blanks. Like the energy yeah. is crazy. And you wouldn't even expect for him to. Uh, for it to be that way for him and with the, t- with the nature of the type of songs and the music he does, yeah. I didn't expect it to be that hype. So it really caught me True. off guard and he's one of the best I've ever seen live. I, got well, I would list. say most is live is a lot more akin to a jazz musician. Live. Okay. Like, so it, it really, the, their it live aesthetics are so different. And yes. it's like, it really is like, what are you looking for? for in the live show. That's true. Show. That's true. I'll give um, you that. I'll give you that. It's like it's kind of like seeing Rakim live versus seeing Wyclef John live. It's like Rakim's not going to climb up on the rafters of a, of a light fixture. I don't like that. And, and start I don't, I don't and start know if I like that singing. Vic, 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 Squad lyrics. Like that. Are, the you, are you serious? I've seen Why, Rakim live. and Wyclef John. Rakim, Rakim's live aesthetic to me, like Nas, this is more about his his persona and his mystique and his command and control. And his ability to his walk case. back and forth. Yeah, <laughs> he, <literally laughs> he doesn't have to. He forth. doesn't have to like, do much. Shit. But but seeing so, so seeing Rock him in 2020, <clears throat> it's not like seeing Rock him probably it was in 1988. The mystique was different. It was like yeah, when I saw yeah. Rock him in 2006. I don't know if you were at the show with me. You may have seen the show at the Sonar. I was there. It, it was, was like there. it was literally like the Christ had walked out on stage. <laughs> yeah, that intro music the kid could replay. Like I swore he levitated. <laughs> I mean, it was like, and he threw a towel, and one of my friends flew for the towel like he was a female. I so I just could not. I, I was. It was, it was ridiculous. That wasn't far from me. That wasn't far. <laughs> yeah. From yeah. So I mean, yeah, I could. So Rock him has. So I, I see what you say with the different. It, that's different than. Seeing yeah. like a Big Daddy Kane or Karras one live or a Wide Clef John at at Art in two thousand and five, that was the too. craziest show. Like he he's crowd surf like like what he did with the guitar, like the sing how he was pulling in covers of like Tribe songs and and and, and Fat Joe songs that were popular at the time. Like it was an it was an all out full body experience. But a completely different aesthetic. So, so what I, what I what I will say, like different artists, as you say, they 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 have different, uh, different aesthetic of what they're doing live, or, but I would say from a casual standpoint, or from the standpoint of what's undeniable, if you take yeah. a regular fan that's not like a a hip hop fan of that person, and you take them to a common show or a most show, I think the regular person is going to connect or be entertained by Common a little bit more. If you're a seasoned hip hop listener and you really like most Def and you and you you liken him to a jazz musician or you liken him to a Marvin Gaye hip hop artist, then that's something different. You're gonna appreciate that more. But if you take two people that don't know anything from an entertainment standpoint, they're probably gonna lean towards common. Just